Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to being here. I got to change it up, you know. Why not? Why not? That handsome guy who you can't see, but his voice sounds sexy, is Shia. Thank you. And I'm Ariel. She's magnificent. Well, thank you. Mm. Today's no, thank episode you. is your healing presence. It's any interesting because I was going to say discovering the healer in you, mm. which is not the title of today's show, but you have a healer that resides within you, whether you realize it or not. And most of us don't think we're healers. We think we're just normal and ordinary and, and I'm not good at that kind of stuff. But what if just by being yourself, not doing anything, your presence has a healing magic. Yeah. <laughs> Allows people to heal themselves when they're around you. Now, when you're busy in your mind trying to change or fix people, well, that's not going to heal anybody. Or when you're locked in your judgmental nature, and each of us have one. It's like this car comes fully loaded. Yes. Including and, and, a judgmental nature. And maybe we have more than one judgmental nature. Maybe we're judgmental about many things. Mm. Uh, ourself especially included. You know, you're talking about discover the healer in you. I suddenly felt like I was in an episode of Harry Potter. Well, and how you can put your healing presence, you can lock it in a cupboard like a cloak. Mm -hmm. And if you open the cupboard door or you are allowing yourself to be here, be vulnerable, be yourself, the ability to magically impact the quality of the lives of people around you emerges. It's as if you're, instead of wearing an invisibility cloak, you're wearing a well-being cloak. And people coming in your proximity can relax and be themselves and don't need to be defended or... You know, many years ago, I was hired by a company to uh, do body work on the exact in that company, uh, you know, hands on healing that I did about 40 years ago. Or so, and interestingly enough, when I arrived, I said, you know, now you don't have to worry, I'm here. Now, it wasn't arrogance, it was that I had discovered that when I am being with somebody, not trying to change them or fix them, but just being with them, their ability to heal themselves somehow becomes available. And, and I don't think I'm special in that regard. I think we all have a healing presence that when we're not busy doing things can emerge. You actually may have misheard what Shia just said. Perhaps you heard it the way it was intended, but I, I'm going to back up to it because it was so potent. He walked into this company where they'd hired him to work with the executives to relieve tension, stress, and pain. And he said, don't worry, I'm here. And most of us hear it in or at least initially, possibly hear it as an ego statement. Don't worry, I'm here. It's a little bit like, I'm having all sorts of funny thoughts today, but there was a cartoon when I was a kid called Mighty Mouse. That's right. And He's on like, his way. Mighty Mouse is on his way. <laughs> Mighty Mouse saves the day. But it was the individual, that character that saves the day. And the important thing in that sentence, don't worry, I'm here, is not I'm, it's here. When you're here, worries drop away, 
Stress drops away. Fear of the future drops away. Things resolve themselves effortlessly, easily. Today, let's play with listening as a way to access that cupboard you have inside you. Now, listening. That contains that cloak. Yes. Listening uh, is not thinking about what's being said to see whether you agree or disagree with it. Listening is allowing what somebody says to come into you from their point of view, to hear their point of view without judging them for having a point of view. And that's an extraordinary phenomena. The phenomena of being heard. And as I listened to you, I became aware of my shoulders. And I don't believe I was carrying a lot of stress. But as you spoke, it feels as if they got lower and longer, like broader, broader, like this, my shoulders are farther away from my neck. Listening is just this incredible possibility where you don't have to do anything with what you hear. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to disagree with it. You don't have to pass it through what you know to see if it is truly possible. Just assume it's possible. Transformation is instantaneous. Yeah. In an instant, you can access well-being. In German, they say in a transformation is called Augenblick. The moment is the blink of an eye. Mm. Your life can transform in the blink of an eye if you allow what's being said to come into you rather than try to get somewhere. You know, we're always trying to get somewhere as if where we are is not enough. Where right. we are is enough. Where you are is enough. Three principles, starting with the second one. Second principle of instantaneous transformation. Life shows up as it does perfectly in this moment, including, is that your belly? It might have been. It's, it's gurgling. It's very fun. Life shows up as it does. I don't have to be embarrassed? No. Okay, good. Uh, yes, then it's my belly. Okay, good. And then Twas. you have choices. You resist it. You don't want it to be like it is. Or you see it. And then you have the next moment and the next moment. When you resist something. You get stuck to it. It's like a coffee cup. If you touch it it's and grab it by its handle, then you are stuck with it. Anything you resist persists and get stronger. Anything you allow to be the way it is completes itself in an instant. Which is exactly where we started, where Shai started all those years ago. He brought his presence into places where people had pain or stress. He touched them, perhaps with a finger. And when you become aware of something, it can dissolve in an instant. Should we take our first guest? No work necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Work it because, you know, working on yourself really doesn't work. Let's take Christiana. Hi. Hi. Where are you tuning in from? I'm tuning in from Hamburg, Germany. Excellent. And you look so beautiful. Yes, you oh, do. Thank you. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll release these also as videos because it's a shame people can't see you. They'll have to just listen and hear who you are. What can we do for you, Christiana? Well, um, I have been divorced since 10 years and I have four children. And uh, my family is quite at peace with one another, uh, especially my ex-husband and me. <laughs> but my uh, eldest daughters, 
they really fight since I think since a year or something they can't get to peace with one another. Now here's the thing. You said something a moment ago that I heard. You said your two oldest daughters. Yes. Now, your oldest daughter, was she the oldest child? Yes. So there wasn't a son before the daughter? No. Good. Then, then everything you said is consistent with the way I see things. See, when there is one child and a new one is born into the family, there is often animosity because the first child had all the attention and now this interloper this new person shows up and everybody gives the attention to that one. And so what normally happens is those two children do not get along and the older child usually tortures the younger one every opportunity. Now, I notice you just smiled there. And that smile is an indicator to me that I'm really on with what I'm suggesting, that it's, it's karmic. It's like karma. It is not an accident that your eldest daughter does not get along with her next youngest sibling. So you're trying to have them like each other will not produce what you want. The other thing, you said a very interesting thing. You said you want to heal these two. Heal was an improper synonym for fix. Yes. You want to fix and make different the fight. You are resisting that they are in conflict and what you resist will persist and grow stronger. Hmm. See, you have to discover, well, you know, we talked about listening. That's very good. Listening requires a neutrality. Yeah. You, you just, did, oh, I wish this was video because you're, you just had all kinds of facial expressions yeah. that showed up with that. You're not neutral in this. You have a desire to have the outcome that you want. And the outcome that you want can only go in opposition to the way those two individuals relate. And they're relating the way they want to, you see. They've been in a fight forever. This is not new. This, this didn't start last week. No. You're... Uh, if your kids are normal, they likely want you to take sides and they want you to take their side. <laughs> yeah. That's and, funny. you know, it happens in reverse too. I remember once uh, I, back many years ago, uh, I, when I still had ideas that my mom should have done it differently. Uh, and, and your children still have ideas that you could have or should have done it differently. Yes, they have. <laughs> yes. And I remember me saying something to one of my sisters about mom and it was disparaging. It was not like a, oh gosh, I love her. Isn't it lovely? I love sitting with her. Um, which ultimately that was my final full experience of her toward the end years but this was before that and I said something and I remember my sister said oh well I rather like her I like being with her and it wasn't trying to get me to change it was her statement of fact and something in me had me sit back and look and realize that perhaps it wasn't her, after all, it was all my attitude. And I'm not suggesting that you now say that to one or the other of your daughters. 
But there was something very interesting that in that moment, my sister found what Shai was describing, which is neutrality. Mm. She wasn't trying to defend my mom. She wasn't trying to change my mind. She was simply stating her experience. And I, I feel as if you've gotten pulled into their fight and you're trying to be a peacemaker with two people who want to fight with each other. And also it's possible that this eruption of disagreement between them is healing. Meaning well, if it's always been this way underneath and now it's come to the surface. That's the, not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, but there's another piece to it. It gets your, your attention. attention. Now, see, if they weren't fighting, you probably wouldn't think about them as much. No, that's true. That's, that's true. true. And so their fighting produces you giving each of them more attention to try to get them not to fight. Mm. So they've got your attention, which is what they want. But it's not for the right reasons. The other thing, it's not just these are two lovely people whom you love care about deeply it's like you have an ownership as their mother i want to heal it i have two sisters if they were fighting with each other you might have a passing thought well, well that's unfortunate but you wouldn't really care because they're not your kids and it's a reflection, Christiana, on you. That if you were a really good mother, then they would have turned out better. And let me tell you something. I, I have known you for several years now. And it, my experience is that you are a really good mother. That you've given everything to your kids. You've taken care of them. You've dedicated yourself to their well-being. I am absolutely certain I even recall that. times where you're like, I need to go now. I have to drive uh, my child to their game, or it's important that I'm there for them. You've done so many things. At some point, they have the option to... How old are they now? Uh, well, the oldest one is uh, 27 now. She got married two weeks ago. And I think uh, she's now in the same, well, she's in the situation of building and creating a family herself. And now she's reflecting on her family and perhaps also a little bit of thinking that it's difficult to have children and how will I create my family? And then she thinks of her mother and I will do it differently than you did it. And that's what she gives me. <laughs> okay, so that so I got one that's 27. How old is the other one? Uh, the other one is 25. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. <laughs> See, your older daughter was two years old <clears throat> when the new one came along. <laughs> and they, they don't call them the terrible twos for nothing. It's a difficult time. And interestingly enough, the decisions we make as children run forward in time and follow us up. Well, your daughter, your oldest daughter, has never forgiven your second daughter for showing up. Now, mind you, she has your genetics. And I remember many, many years ago when we did a video with you that was so stunningly transformational and healing that it became the initial inspiration point and basis for our book, uh, How to Have a Match Made in Heaven. And at that time, you were so deeply committed to being angry and non-forgiving of your father. Of your father. So it's not surprising 
that your daughter has a similar and, and you know she that was in her formative years so your way of being towards your father was normal to you and normal to her right it was a role model to follow so i doubt your daughters will listen to the show here ever hear the show they might but more is about you uh, allowing yourself to keep I, I if i were you i would allow yourself to forgive yourself yes <laughs> forgive means to give up the right to punish or the desire to punish. Mm -hmm. It means to have it as though the event never happened. Like when you forgive a debt, it never happened. So you get you- See, look, look, look mm -hmm. let, let, let's go back to that second principle of instantaneous transformation. Ready? Yes. <laughs> Be different than you are right now. Too late. Now went by. So if you couldn't be different than you are now in present time, how could you have been different back then when you didn't even realize you were at war with your dad from a decision a child made? See, Christiana, the person who needs healing here is not your children. It's you. The more... You allow yourself the grace to be yourself. The and to realize you've done nothing wrong. You've only lived the only way that was possible in every moment of your life up until this one. See, even now, in this moment, my dear, you have no control. Everybody thinks they control their behavior. For the most part, we have no control over our behavior. You know, somebody beeps a horn at us and anger shows up in us. And that's an automatic response to danger. Well, our lives are on rails until we start to realize that we have no control. And then control shows up in your willingness to have what you have in the current moment. That gives you some control there. Your daughters, they are on rails. They fight automatically. And they, there's, you, what, what needs healing is you. You are worth Allowing yourself to be okay being you exactly as you are and exactly as you have been in your past. You're, and, you're, you, know, you're, you, you are such a sweetheart, you know. You don't realize it because you've had negative thoughts. <laughs> you've talked about being at peace with your ex, but it's okay to be at peace with yourself even if the people around you, like your daughters, choose to be in conflict. And it really is what gives you clarity to see when there's the opportunity to say something that might make a difference. Make a difference. But it mainly relieves you of the pressure to have to do something about the circumstances. The circumstances. You can be well, and the circumstances may not be what you would like. Wow. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful for me. This is such a relief for me. Yes, my dear, it is. And I, mm. we love you so much. The way you are, you see. And you think you need to do things differently. You don't. You're doing great. Back to your inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks for um, being so open and sharing with and listeners. Vulnerable. I, I love am it. certain that there's a I, whole I'm, host of people yes. who got a lot out of today. You're not the only person who has children that fight. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Much. Hey, 
You want to hear about transformation? Mm -hmm. We've got one of our listeners about to tell you about what's happened in their life out of listening to being here. Mm. This is Dave in Winnipeg. And transformation has given me the possibility of an amazing life that I, that I never expected. It's brought me back into everything that I do with the presence and awareness of who and where I am. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Errol and Shire's lively, interactive, living made easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. You are invited to a Living Made Easy seminar. The next one is this Saturday, October 23rd, and then the following Monday, October 25th. If you're listening to this in the archive, you can just go up to our website, transformationmadeeasy.com, and look and see when the next one is, and you are invited. Saturdays and Tuesdays also have uh, the bilingual aspect, so it'll be in both English and German. Then we're doing a weekend seminar on November 6th and 7th, Discover the Healer in You. Uh, and in December 11th and 12th, The Power of Listening is our offering. That one will also be bilingual. It will be in English and in German. And I want to go back to Discover the Healer in you for a moment, because I realized as we were speaking with Christiana, how much people really feel the impact when people around them are in conflict. And over the course of this weekend, that that ability to have that well-being hum uh, gets stronger. So if you think of it like you're like a tuning fork and each of us have well-being in us, if you're resonating with well-being, people come into your proximity, that part of them resonates too. You are very, very welcome. You're invited. And then we have opened our residential workshop in Costa Rica, where you can come for either one or two weeks in uh, 2022. So January 15 through 22 or 22 through 29 or both. You can find out about all of our offerings and sign up for our newsletter and read our articles and watch the videos. All the things we're doing is at transformationmadeeasy.com. Let's see. Let's, I think we, we went from Christiana. Let's now speak to, to Christian. Christian. Hi, Christian. Where are you zooming in from today? Hey, guys. I'm zooming in from Munich, Germany. All right. Welcome. Are you living in Munich now or are you just visiting there? I'm living. I'm based in Munich. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, I have to say, you were in the intro, you were talking about um, Shaya's work when he got invited to work in a company. And then um, people started with the healing presence, just like to focus on um, like where the pain is. And I had some shoulders, shoulder, my shoulders were quite tight. I had swimming training this morning and I started to listen to you guys. And after a while I was starting doing like this and I was like, huh? my shoulders feel so well now. It's relaxed and I'm impressed. You know, it's like we are up across the pond. Yes. A big, big pond. Big pond. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, wow, it's even working over the distance. Of course. All it takes, Christian, is you to be where you are, not in your thoughts. Now, look, you, I know you, I've known you for several years now. You have a handicap. 
Huh. What is that? Your body type. You are long and thin, and yeah. people with long, thin bodies think a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and I, I don't like to make generalizations, but that's been my experience over the years as well. And so left to your own devices, you work on yourself a lot and that builds tension. Now, you slowed down enough to listen to what we were saying to Christiana. You got engaged and you left you alone for a few minutes and your body healed itself. Cool. And I have to say, I, you know, I didn't do anything specific, like on purpose. Yes, like, but that's the point. But that's the difference, Christian, excellent, between change and transformation. In change, you identify something as a problem, like my shoulders are tight. That's a problem. Now, mind you, if they're tight, you may want to go get a massage. That's totally fine. But I'm talking problem solution in change. It's wrong. I want to make it right. It's not good. I want to make it good. It's good, bad, right, wrong, better, worse. Improve things. But you see, what happened was you actually listened when we were speaking to Christiana. And no two things can occupy the same Christian at the same time. So when you're listening, you're not picking on yourself. You're not working on yourself to improve you or get better. When you're truly listening, that's all you're doing. And you leave you alone. And that's the gift. You stop working on yourself. Yeah. It feels so Go ahead. feels what? It feels so light. Yes. Well, you've had this experience before. It's called being in the moment. It's called transformation. You've had that experience, but you lose it mm -hmm. because you see you have agendas that run your life. The need to get more, better, different, more work, more recognition, more. And, and so that striving to get somewhere keeps you from being. Being is a very interesting phenomena. This morning, I, I've lived in this house for about 23 years. And along with the house comes some quite a bit of land. And there is a fenced in area near our house that has been there fenced in since we moved into this area 23 years ago. This morning, I took a chainsaw and removed those posts that held up the fence when and they, removed the fence. When he talks about posts, they're more the size of telephone poles. They're not little posts. They were big. So when he removed it, it was shocking to see how open that area looked. It's, it's like so much of how you interact with your life is an everyday normal thing for you. You take it for granted and you're striving to get somewhere. You know, you have schedules and you try to get there to, you know, to fulfill this idea of success rather than realizing that you are already an incredibly successful man. Exactly as you are right now, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to change a hair on your head. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good joke. In case you haven't met Christian, uh, he does hair and makeup and beautifully. In fact, if you've seen any of the videos that we've shot in the more recent years in Costa Rica, he did everybody's hair and makeup who sat down. Uh, and in that, I've always seen your healing presence because you walk into the room and you and take people's your attention on how they look goes away. You, you take your attention off yourself and make a difference with the people you are in service of. 
I have a feeling, Christian, that you've step. You have a little gap between you and something that you're really good at, and that is giving. And I, I, I'll give you my example of it. Mm-hmm. When you talked about your swimming training this morning, I got a picture, and the picture comes from when you get into the water and you're doing the training there's at least an idea that you need to get better as a swimmer better rather than getting in the water to express yourself to play if you have a swimming coach to give that individual your full attention and see how you can glide through the water for the effortlessness of gliding through the water, but not to be better someday. Mm -hmm. See that the need to get better someday is all in change. It is not transformational. You can never get better enough for your mind to be satisfied. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's the, the it's still playing the same, you know, like it will always, it's a machine. It plays the you, same. you know, machines don't uh, express themselves, they just follow the script. You know, I'm not surprised when I download a book and I connect my iPhone to my car that it plays the words that were pre-recorded on that book. You have pre-recordings in there. You shouldn't be surprised when your playlist plays. (laughs) And here's the, the interesting thing about a Christian. Most of those decisions that you made as a child are what you're acting out now. See, the childhood ideas that of your needing to be a better person, needing to get better, needing to be more self-expressive. Those ideas keep replaying, but they're not today's idea. They're an idea from years ago that have been, every day you've been saying those things to yourself. That voice in your head when I say you, because that isn't you. Interestingly enough, we're talking about being a healer. The you that listens is a being, not a doing. Not trying to get somewhere to improve. But if you listen to it and you think that's you, well, then you do that stuff. An extra 10 laps. Yeah. You know, I love that you're doing swimming training because I heard you talk about it. I know it's a passion of yours. Uh, Shai and I went away to British Columbia to one of our favorite places to fish. We were fly fishing with a spay rod, which is a really tall, more than 13 foot fly rod that requires two hands. It's a type of system of fly fishing. And the fishing there was so poor. I mean, there were so few fish that we had to agree never to to take the fish out of the water, to do our best to release them underwater. And if you hooked one, that was it for the day. Well, it wasn't a problem to say, okay, I'll do that because over the course of the week, and there were six other anglers there, Shai and I were the only one who caught one fish. So all week, There was nothing. nothing. But what was really interesting, Christian, is it had been two years since I'd been there. In those last two years, I have fished with a spay rod one day. I was far better than I've ever, ever been in my life. And part of it, the majority of it, was me not picking on myself and my thoughts that to be there while I'm making the move, I could see if that something was a little too fast or I missed something or that there was this elegance in being me. 
And whilst there, when I got really clear, there were virtually no fish. I was like, let me learn things about what the different textures Mm -hmm. of the water mean. I can always see the difference, but I don't know what means there's the current, there's where they'll sit. This is where it gets fast. This is, it was so, so exquisite. And I came upon grizzly bears, uh, thankfully across the river. And I got to take pictures and eagles and brown bears. And one night, black black bears, sorry, we were sitting in the uh, lodge and we were all at dinner and we were talking and we were talking about bears. And I looked up and out the window, across the river, down the way, I'm like, there's one now. And we all got to jump up and go outside and take pictures and be with it. Because when you're being here, you become a magnet for possibility as opposed to Uh, ever not enough. Always trying to be better, trying to get somewhere, not seeing your own greatness all the time. (coughs) This uh, it rings very much home for me, like the improvement I want to achieve, where I want to go with career, when I want to go with swimming or well, you yes. know, it's interesting. Um, maybe I've missed it and maybe it went to spam, but I cleared out my spam this morning. I haven't seen any of your newsletters in a while. I loved your newsletters, not only to see things that you've done, but you often have given away tips about makeup. This is my favorite mascara, which I'm using today. This is my favorite uh eyeliner which i'm using today uh this is how i like to do lips which i have done today so it's like you've gotten enough consumed with getting somewhere you've forgotten the pleasure you get just from being you and giving taking care of people yes oh and and interesting The flip side of that is you have to be honest that you have something to offer. So sometimes I just send people, uh, like I'll get excited about one of my grizzly bear pictures, for instance, or a flying bald eagle. And I'll be working for a company and I'll say, oh, just for fun, here's a picture. I thought you might like to see it. It's just, I don't even know this person, but it gives me pleasure to share something and i i have to not worry about whether what i have to share is worthy but it it gives me pleasure to share something and included in that christian is that you've taken some amazing photos for different magazines and you have to be willing for people to see the makeup and the hair and the things that you've done and go, oh my God, that Christian is so talented. But if you think you're not enough, you're not going to want to give that out because people are going to appreciate it as you are. Yeah. And like I said before, your mind can never be satisfied. That voice in your head doesn't know satisfaction but you can experience satisfaction. Mm. You have to be willing to give yourself the gift. Thank you so much. That's like, I have a new world, a new eye. It's like, I can, I'm not sure if it's the right term to say, but I can feel like my passion, my enthusiasm, it's like, it's like, Oh, it's starting to vibrate in my body. And yes, it's all. Oh. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really a pleasure to yeah, be Yeah, man. I, I so love you. And, and, and seeing you, I've forgotten, you know, like 
COVID has kept us apart. Oh, yes. <laughs> really? I am sincerely hoping you make it to Costa Rica, not only because it would be lovely to have you there if we do videos, but primarily because it would be so awesome to be with you in person. Mm, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, thanks, everyone, for being with us today. You know, if you want to be a guest like Christiana or Christian, uh, just you, you don't have to have Christian as a first name. No, you can have your first name and uh, you can just go to transformationmadeeasy.com forward slash being here and find out how. And you can also, if you want, submit a listener spotlight, which is basically just a little statement of what transformation uh, has done for you, what's happened for you, uh, what you've seen with it, what happens for you when you listen to this podcast, and feel free to share this with friends. Right. It, I, I was so touched by our guests today. Me too. Really. Me too, definitely. Next week's episode, podcast. Is you are accomplished. Boy, it kind of goes right on the, the heels of having talk and, talked yeah. with a Christian and Christian. Yes. Thanks for being with us today. Yes, thank you. We'll be so, back next week. So come on back. Don't miss being here.